Welcome to this fourth Sunday in Advent, although the fourth candle of the Advent wreath refers to Mary and her chapter of the story. We're backtracking 800 years to the prophet Micah, and he has something to say about Bethlehem. Micah chapter 5. But you, O Bethlehem, Ephrathah, are only a small village among all the people of Judah. Yet, a ruler of Israel will come from you, one whose origins are from the distant past. The people of Israel will be abandoned to their enemies until the woman in labour gives birth. Then, at last, his fellow countrymen will return from exile to their own land, and he will stand to lead his flock with the Lord's strength in the majesty of the name of the Lord his God. Then his people will live there undisturbed, for he will be highly honoured around the world, and he will be the source of peace. Micah says that God speaks when he has something to say, and so our appropriate response is to listen and to receive his word. He has told you, O oh man, what is good, to love justice, mercy, walk humbly with your God. He has told you. And Bethlehem will be important, even though it's so small, because God has decreed it. From you shall come forth for me, he says, one who is to rule in Israel. Micah chapter 5 starts by referring and talking about Jerusalem, which is a, a large and important city, and it is judged. And immediately, suddenly, in the next verse, he switches to this small and insignificant place called Bethlehem, Bethlehem, house of bread. And he refers to Bethlehem uh, not because it's small so much as the fact that a ruler will come from Bethlehem of the line of David. It's the reference of 
uh, reference to the promise that God made to David in 2 Samuel 7 that a, a king would reign from his dynasty forever. And that never happened in history. So this is quite an interesting uh, prophecy that a ruler will come from David's line. There's a prophecy about uh, Judah, which is David's tribe, back in uh, Genesis 49, in the beautiful Shagal windows in the hospital in Jerusalem uh, of Judah. Jacob speaks a prophecy from his deathbed on all his sons, and for Judah he says this, Judah, your brothers will praise you. You will grasp your enemies by the neck. All your relatives will bow before you. Judah, my son, is a young lion that has finished eating its prey. Like a lion, he crouches and lies down. Like a lioness, who dares to rouse him? The scepter will not depart from Judah, nor the ruler's staff from his descendants, until the coming of the one to whom it belongs, the one whom all nations will honour. So this thing about Judah, David, a ruler from that tribe, goes right back to Jacob's own blessing of his sons and of the words he speaks about Judah. If we miss the long-term perspective of the fact this plan has been in action since Jacob, in fact even before that, but particularly with regard to the tribe of Judah and the line of David, um, that God has had a single-minded a purpose, then uh, if we miss this perspective, the Christmas story, I think, will always be a slightly sentimental story in which a small baby is born in extraordinary circumstances and afterwards, well, for society in general, fades into obscurity and vanishes. Well, maybe he was a wise teacher, uh, maybe he did a few miracles and, well, Easter, about bunnies and chocolate. So un unapologetically, we talk about Micah when we're thinking about Mary. This passage is not only just about Bethlehem, though. Bethlehem is important because we know Jesus was born there. But the, it goes on to say that God will pause his plan with his people Israel. He will pause, he will cease interaction with the nation until the birth of Jesus. And then those who follow this ruler shepherd sent by God will be his people, his new Israel. And there was, interestingly, 400 years of silence between the words of Malachi and the words of John the Baptist. And then the passage goes on to talk about the nature of the kingdom of this ruler. It will be noted for its security and its peace because he reigns supreme. All this seems to speak well on and beyond itself, written 800 years before Jesus and recapping the promise made through Jacob and made to David by God. So although we're talking about Bethlehem being the birthplace of this ruler shepherd figure of which Jesus seems to be the ultimate fulfilment, he is known as Jesus of Nazareth. His identity was misunderstood uh, by the religious leaders for this very reason. They expected their Messiah to be born in Bethlehem and Jesus was from, well, Nazareth. But we know because of Luke's careful reporting uh, that the family went back to Bethlehem for a census. It, it seems odd to me that a census should require people to go back to their place of family origin wouldn't it be more efficient for people to be counted where they lived like our own census and according to the office of 
national statistics. Census taking goes back 4,000 years with data being collected for different reasons. So the Romans conducted a census every five years, calling on every man and his family to return to his place of birth in order to keep track of the population. That was their point of a census. So Jesus ends up in Bethlehem just at the moment of being born. You know, that's something only God can engineer. Jesus can't manipulate being born just to fulfil a prophecy uttered 800 years previously. God engineers all sorts of things to make his story happen. Uh, my sister Rosemary has a thrill as she remembers that the star appeared just at the right time uh, two years later when the wise men visit Jesus on their family annual trip to Jerusalem for the Passover. The wise men follow the star and when did that star set off given that there are light years to be reckoned with? God engineering circumstances to make things happen. I think I would want to go back to that angel's greeting to Mary, to Gabriel, when he says to her, do not be afraid. Why not? Because this is God's story. He has got it firmly in hand and he can engineer the smallest of detail in the longest time span there is and accomplish it. Now maybe that's something we need to hear in this time of change and chance, changes and chances of this world, as the prayer says, the fleeting changes and chances of this world. The God hasn't suddenly lost, a grip, lost his uh, grip on history. And although he has given history to us and uh, societies and um, organisation of our life together to us as human beings, and he continues to trust us with this immense task and we're clearly failing at it, he has not lost the plot of history and he can engineer the smallest of details to accomplish his plan which will end, as the Micah reading says, the son of Mary ruling in security and peace. And security and peace will be found and are found and can be found in him, in Jesus Christ.
for you may like to pause this video for your own prayer and reflection. Eternal God, as Mary waited for the birth of your Son, so we wait for his coming in glory. Bring us, through the birth pangs of this present age, to see with her our great salvation in Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen.